welcome to electrical stuff this is a channel where you can learn the electrical knowledge in building sector today's our video topic is how to select the capacitor bank sizes let's start our video capacitor banks are play vital role in the network so in your mind running these questions how what are the steps to find out the capacitor bank calculations then what is the formula to calculate kvr and then if you are looking for the how to choose the right size capacitor bank and uh, what, what is the selection process of capacitor bank if you are looking these questions then this video is for you watch the video till end to understand the concept now let's see some basic uh, elements in the power we have active power reactive power and apparent power active power represented in the kilowatt reactive power represented in kvr apparent power in a kva if apparent power we can return as s is equal to square root of p square plus q square and then we have a how we define the power factor it is a cosine angle between active power and reactive power if it is represented power factor represented in cos pi cos pi it is equal to kilowatt by kva these are some basic formulas so let's see what capacitor bank can do capacitor banks can do it produce the reactive power in the network and it in order to prevent the unwanted unnecessary circulation current of the circuit this is the capacitor bank can do capacitor bank calculation process is four step process first step is find out the reactive power second step is the compensation mode third step is compensation type and fourth step is operating conditions and harmonics let's see these in detail in the coming slides step 1 process step one process is find out the reactive energy so i am sharing with you one example here to find out the reactive energy i have a total load of 500 megawatt and power factor 0.8 i want to improve power factor is 0.9 how what is this let me explain you here the concept so for example this is your uh, this is your main distribution board okay this is your main distribution board from main distribution board this is your load okay this is your load this load have a 500 kilowatt load is there so here what what they are saying in the main db you have a power factor meter it power factor meter it shows that when you give the power supply to this one there is a power uh, power is applied then power factor shows 0.8 power factor so power factor it is the cosine angle you know that one so voltage and current it is a co cosine angle between them so here power factor 0.9 but we want to improve the network with 0.9 this is our required power factor 0.9 this is what i am i am showing here 0.9 so how to do this one this calculation i i will be show here let let me tell you here 0.8 what is this 0.8 means why it is coming 0.8 because this load is reactive load this load is reactive load so due to the reactive load it produce 0.9 so what we have to be do if same amount of reactive load we produce here so with the with the help of capacitor bank it will compensate so this this will be produced like this this will produce like this so this will produce like this and this will produce like this so it will be cancel so if it is cancel then our 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 uh, how much we are sending and uh, how much voltage we are sending and receiving also it will be the same because there is a no losses to understand the capacitor bank i explain in the earlier video uh, just watch the video uh, so you understand why we require the capacitor banks in the network okay then so now you understand how, why uh, what is we are going to do here so we want to know that these capacitor bank these capacitor bank so what is how much reactive power we want to produce in the network this is what we want to know now let's see the formula let's see the formula here uh, how to find out the reactive power i will be sharing with you uh, give me a second so this is how we are going to uh, i will be share you in the so what is the formula formula is equal to this is the formula this is the formula load load in load into tan of 
cos inverse of old power factor tan of cos inverse of new power factor so this is the formula here if if you using this formula we using this formula load of tan of cos inverse of old power factor tan of cos inverse of new power factor what do you mean old power factor old power factor you put this value 0.8 you will put this value and what is the new power factor in the new power factor you will put 0.9 so summarize what is the load load here this is your load so 500 kilowatt is load just substitute these values in this uh, formulas so you will get the answer now see i'll substitute the values here it is like this 500 into tan of cos inverse of 0.8 then tan of cos inverse of 0.9 this is i'll put the values here so what 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 we receive here find tan of cos inverse of 0.8 0.72 tan of cos inverse of 0.9 0.46 so how this value coming 500 into 0.26 it is equal to 130 kvr so you want to install 130 kvr capacitor banks in the network uh, in the network this is the how we want to find out the our calculation process uh, can i i uh, hang on here i give you one shortcut for example when you want to calculate during the design stage uh, in general principle we are 0.8 we are generally considering this is the load sometime if it's a chill a chillers or something there 0.6 also we want to choose it usually if it is a lighting load this is the uh, normal capacitor loads or something we just calculate person 0.8 and then we want to require 0.9 so what what is shortcut here this you see this one i calculated here 0 0.8 0 0.9 this is 0.26 so next time what you want to do if you have a load load is 1000 kilowatt load then multiply by 0.26 you will get the answer okay this is this is the reactive power this is the reactive power this is how you want to choose it but in general principle how we are going to do all these uh, elements means here how we are going to do uh, this calculation means first in during our load schedule during our load schedule designing time we want to find out what is the inductive load inductive load we will calculate this inductive load you, you we know that motor load motors chillers etc these all are inductive loads coming so we will calculate it during our load schedule process we will see what is the induct total inductive inductive load then we will be find out this total inductive load at the end of the uh, our uh, our total load we have a total we have a total load in the total load we have a reactive uh, sorry we have a total load we have a inductive load plus we have a general load that is a resistive load resistive load so here we will get this inductive load based upon this inductive load you will calculate the how much compensation required this is how we do the in general calculations but this is how the formula uh, here i am showing you how we are going to do the uh, this capacitor bank this is the step one process so i understand it's a shortcut also i explain you here there is a 0.26 if you multiply by total load you will get the value but consider this is not always a correct uh, stage this is depend upon the what is your power factor while you calculating the what i told you point eight what is a power factor and here how much compensation this is what you want to do sometime some people will say during the diva adc exam they will give you this type of method then they will say that 0.95 required then so this value will be changed you know this value will be changed so in the calculator you will find out so this is the formula if you remember this formula load into tan of cos inverse of old power factor tan of cos inverse of new power factor if you know this formula then it is very easy to find out the total kvr required so hope uh, i understand uh, hope you people understand the step one process now let's see the uh, let's see the step two process step two process is compensation based upon location so where we want to keep this capacitor banks there is a three step process one whether we can connect it in the main db side or second connected to each feeder 
third is individual load basically while we are studying they will say that the capacitor banks are connected the near the equipment if you look at the fan fan is there if you look you know you people all know the fan in the fan where is the capacitor bank installed with the fan when you have a motor where the motor it is installed it, with the with the motor it, there is a capacitor bank there correct and similarly if you look at the major equipments in build there is a capacitor bank is there so why we require that capacitor bank that capacitor bank to compensate the inductive load this is how we are doing still there is a produce the uh, some some equipment they don't have a capacitor bank or we required more capacitor bank uh, compensation required so usually for economical cases and uh, economical way as well as we choose the uh, easy of operations uh, for all these reasons we are keeping the connected at the main db we are keeping the capacitor bank at the main db side this is the recommended one mostly globally it is recommended one uh, these three we will see with a picture here if i am i am showing i am showing you here a picture it is showing this is a transformer your acb there this is a main db you have a two feeders are coming here feeder one feeder two then you have a each uh, feeder it is feeding two loads okay so in between you have a mdb rs mdb whatever uh, you, uh, this for the illustration purpose i'm showing you the step one it means that capacitor banks you are connected to the main db here and step two each feeder you are feeding a capacitor banks so in the step two cases we don't have here we are keeping this network we are keeping one capacitor bank this network we are keeping another capacitor bank so this is the each feeder we are connecting the capacitor bank and similarly uh, this uh, wise visa also if you can uh, wise visa if each feeder this is for for consider this one each feeder we have a capacitor bank also for if you consider the transformer side but the load in general principle load side you you have a two capacitor banks but individual load each individual load also you can con con uh, connect the capacitor bank and you will compensate the reactive load and this is the three uh, methods three based upon the locations you will be choose the capacitor bank and uh, then third step is that third step uh, basically it is the compensation time so based upon the how you are compensation this is uh, capacitor banks also choose uh, selection type so uh, here there is a three types are there fixed compensation second fixed compensation where it is fixed value of capacitor bank in the in this fixed compensation you use total kvr you, you will get it and you will put one capacitor bank finish this is a 130 one kvr uh, then it is a fixed value there there is a no uh, breaking like in the second thing automatic compensation in automatic compensation what will happen here automatic different number of steps there so we have a steps in generally it is used in widely in our construction capacitor banks we use the five steps cap, uh, capacitor banks uh, we are using it is a step wise there so you are 130 in our example 130 we divide the five steps accordingly so 25 kvr 50 kvr 50 kvr and then you have a 25 kvr 10 kvr like that you will be connected all the steps uh, you will do because you know in the load it never on the full load correct or no load it never on full full load so sometimes some motors on sometimes some is not on so the cap the our reactive uh, our reactive load it is not connected system all 24 hours therefore we need how the load for example this is a lo load is there this load is reactive load when our capacitor bank will become here so it will only fly if it is decrease our capacitor bank also come decrease so based upon based upon the values based upon this concept our automatic compensation also vary the same thing so just this is the automatic compensation is mostly recommended third is the dynamic compensation dynamic compensation is used in the industry industrial purpose mostly because here load is fluctuating rapidly for the rapid fluctuations your compensation should be rapidly fluctuate in that you cannot go with the step by step it should be automatically it will be vary based upon the loads whatever so uh, here dynamic compensation is there this is the three method three uh, third step is the selection of compensation uh, point uh, so this is the video for today
thanks for watching in the next video because this is the topic is uh, crucial and there is important so capacitor bank selection based upon the operating condition and harmonics so in the capacitor banks you will see the deuterium reactors and different elements are there so for this is a, a it take time little bit so nowadays uh, people are not watching the full length videos if a half an hour or one hour videos more more concentration on the very short videos one minute or two minutes only so one or two minutes or five minutes we cannot explain the whole concept i tried my best to explain uh, how much i can in very less time so this topic is a uh, it will be take time so i'll be explaining the next week video thanks for watching good day bye bye if you have any questions regarding this particular topic please type in the comment section thank you good day bye bye